So I'm back here at Anthony James Cars. Now I keep a close eye on the stock that these guys are running and there's everything in here from high-end supercars. We've got a number of McLarens. We've got a lovely McLaren GT. We've got a lovely R8, which is being collected today. Just off camera there is a beautiful Escort RS Turbo. There's all kinds of things, but every now and again, they have something in that just makes me go, oh my God, and this, this is it, the Aerial Nomad. Now. I don't know about you, but I remember many years ago when Jeremy Clarkson on Top Gear got hold of an aerial atom. For many of us, I think it was probably the first time we'd ever heard of the aerial motor company. And he drove the aerial atom, and I remember pictures of his cheeks blowing out because of the air. And that one video almost springboarded aerial into all of our consciousnesses and certainly did a great deal of good for the sales of the atom. I've experienced an Atom a couple of times. Um, I've been a, a, a passenger in one. I've never actually driven an aerial Atom, but a passenger on a kind of supercar tester day and also out on the road a few years ago. And I think I did a video for the channel on it. They're just mental, mental things. But they are very track focused, road oriented cars. This, this is an aerial Nomad. Now Nomads have been around for quite a long time now, but the genius of this car is it can do both road and off-road. Now, sadly today, because this car's up for sale, I'm only gonna be able to experience it on road, but it's got a really very clever trick suspension setup. It's got a dual spring setup, and you can see the top spring, very tightly coiled red spring. That's almost, if you like, the road damper, and then the damper underneath it gives you more compliance if you're off-road. It's an amazing, amazing bit of kit really boring fact for you. This plastic that we've got on the front here, the only other place you'll see that used is in the making of traffic cones. And as we all know, traffic cones are pretty much indestructible. And that's certainly what you need for this car. But look at it. It's like a, a full size radio controlled Tamiya model. I must admit, if I bought one, the first thing I would do is put two big whiplash aerials with flags on the top. And <laughs> I think it would look awesome. But yeah, an amazing, amazing thing. Let's wander around the back and I wanna tell you about the engine power and most importantly, the weight of this thing. And then my six foot three frame is gonna try and get inside it. And I have a feeling that's gonna be quite emotional. So first off, I mean, for me, what I love about the Atom and the Nomad is this exoskeleton design. It's, it's amazing. Everything's on show, everything's on display. You can see all the suspension components, the springs, the dampers. Inside, you just get to see everything. It's an awesome thing. Now, what that means is this car doesn't weigh a great deal. We're looking at around about 1,100 kilos. But what's under this cover is quite special. So this is a 2.4 liter, four cylinder Honda Civic engine, but it's got a very big supercharger strapped to it and it's producing 300 horsepower. 300 horsepower, 1100 kilos. That is a recipe for a lot of fun. And that's coupled to a six speed manual gearbox, rear wheel drive. What a hoot. Now, getting in one of these things is a little bit tricky, especially when you're as big as me, because the only way in is through that hole in the space frame or through that one. Hmm. I'm gonna go with this one. <laughs> yeah, just, it's unreal. Now, the other thing is, um, that makes it a little bit more tricky is these seats aren't on sliders. Um, now I have already sat in it and actually there's a lot more room than I thought there would be. However, this is not a removable steering wheel. So the trick is feet on the seat, hold on to the framework and then kind of slide yourself in. Let's give that a go. So feet, feet. <sighs> It's kind of knees either side of the steering wheel. Oh yeah. Oh, lots of old man noises getting in and out of this thing. But actually the driving position is pretty good. I'd maybe have the seat back a little bit. My, my knees are a little bit up, but steering wheel's nice and close to me. 
but I can I can see both front wheels. I can see the brake discs and the wishbones and stuff from the near side wheel there. The the steering column you can see it going down there into universal joint onto the steering rack. Um, I've got a beautiful, very notchy six speed gear change. A normal traditional handbrake here, and then this this is a hydraulic fly off handbrake. You know, if I want to be doing I don't know drifting that kind of thing won't be doing any of that today. Uh, and then very race inspired um, dash. Where's the Apple CarPlay? Where's the wireless charger? Oh. Now this car's had a few spicy upgrades as well. It's got braided hoses everywhere. These kind of almost like a tillet seat from a Caterham. Yeah, it's, um, it's quite something. Now my biggest challenge with this car is gonna be audio when we're out driving. So next up i'm going to just work out where i'm going to place some cameras and then we're going to go for a drive i am mildly nervous luckily it's a dry day today um apparently even in the wet i mean it's got the most incredible windscreen wiper sweep but even in the wet once you're at speed because you might not i've got a windscreen which is helpful for audio but also the front um i've got sort of plexiglass panels on the front there which which you can't see, but they will protect me from stones flying up and stuff. So I won't need to wear a helmet, which if you're driving an aerial Atom, um, for me, I would always wear a helmet on one of those just to protect you from stones and bird strikes and those types of things. Yeah, what a wicked thing. And I love this bank of lights on the top as well. So let me try and work out how the hell I'm gonna get cameras in here and then we're gonna go up the road for a drive. I also need to try and work out how the hell I'm gonna get out of it. Hold on a minute, more old band noises. <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. Oh, did that like a boss. <laughs> Before we go out in the aerial nomad, I had to show you this. So of all the cars in here, I'd love to take any of them home, but of any of the things in here, this is what I want to take home. And unfortunately this is Daniel Leona's prized possession. This is an Andy Ruffle special Rally BMX. Now, if you're my age, I actually remember watching Andy Ruffle race. Unfortunately, I had a grifter for my birthday the year before the Rally Burner came out, and therefore I was never allowed one. But this, this is what, what childhood dreams were all about. Look at it, it's absolutely wicked. Two things though that have mildly disappointed me. First of all, it weighs about four tons. It's really, really heavy. And secondly, it's tiny, look, the seat, <laughs> yeah it's not one of those bikes that you would buy to ride but like daniel's got it hanging up, hanging up on the wall here and i just think it's absolutely awesome anyway back to the nomad video well while we wait for it to warm up a supercharger wine what does that sound like i just want to talk you through what it's like to drive one of these things on the public road first things first clutch weight pedals in general feel really nice gate on the gearbox feels really nice suspension feels very compliant i can see the wheels moving around quite a lot i'm just getting used to the way the power comes in I'm under no doubt that the power to weight ratio of this car brakes are pretty good as well. Let me just go down here. I have a feeling I'm going to get lots of looks from people in this car. Lots and lots of looks. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Wow. It's like um, it's like I've been jettisoned back to my childhood and all of my childhood wildest dreams of what a cool car should be have just come true. Oh wow, this is going to get you into a lot of trouble this car. Pickup is unreal. As soon as that supercharger starts winding in, to be honest, I'm not really looking at the rev counter that much. I've got change up lights talking to the guys. Apparently you have to be really brave to wait until they're green and change up. 
and absolutely, utterly moronic to wait till they're red. Oh my God, what a car. Oh, it's a bit wet, look here. Oh, I'm gonna get wet. Oh, I'm not gonna get too wet. That's all right. being a riot to drive it's actually quite civilized I've got a windscreen I'm not being buffeted too much I've got no doors apparently you can get a kind of canvas roof thing not sure how long that would stay on at the speed you end up driving one of these things but it's relatively civilized however you are always just moments away from It's ridiculous. This isn't really a very practical car. Um, I can't see you really driving it to the shops very much. Um, however, <laughs> who cares? It is... Sounds like a thousand squirrels are being killed in the back of the car. Wow. <laughs> it's also not a car for the self-conscious because you get a lot of looks when you're driving this car. Mostly envious ones from guys thinking, that's cool, man. That's like a radio-controlled car for adults. Anybody under the age of 10 just thinks it's the coolest thing ever. And actually, I've discovered that because of its off-road credentials, with the state of our roads in the UK at the moment with all the potholes, perfect, because it just eats them up. The suspension travel's so good. It does feel quite softly sprung. When you chuck it in, there's quite a lot of kind of roll and heave in the car. But ready? <laughs> oh my God. I can't remember. I always talk about visceral cars and I always in the same conversation have to mention Caterham any caterham actually but i always think about the um, 620r that i had for a couple of weeks sequential gearbox similar power output 310 horsepower a little bit lighter than this or quite a bit lighter actually and i always talked about how it made you feel when you drove it it's just this connection between man and machine and this this nomad has it in spades it's it's so approachable i've been in the car i don't know 20 minutes, half an hour, and I'm starting to feel confidence to smash the throttle pedal. I'm not sure what it'd be like in the wet or on a low traction surface on a gravel rally stage. Jesus, this thing would be wicked. Oh, wow. What a thing. I love the way I can see braided hoses running down the central spine of the car. I can see the, the, the universal joint on the steering column moving. I can see the front wheels. I can... There's not a great deal of visibility out the back, got the smallest mirrors ever, but I'm not so sure you're really that bothered about what's behind you, because let's face it, if they're behind you, they're gonna stay there. <laughs> they're not gonna come fast, not in this thing. This car is for sale. I put details below. Um, it may well have been sold by the time this video goes out to me, because <laughs> I wanna buy it really badly. It's definitely a plus one car though. You need, an, you need a daily in your life. You know when we drive supercars and stuff and it's like, oh, could you daily this car? Uh, no, you couldn't daily this car. This is a Sunday fun day car. Absolutely. You need a garage to keep it in and you need something else to run during the week. But if you did that at the weekend, when you roll up that garage door and it just sits there with its four lights, <laughs> it's just going, come on then, let's go and have some fun. And believe me, you're going to have more fun in this car than almost any car I can think of. Okay, now we're out on the open road. Wow. Holy shit. This thing's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I love it. It's because of 
a suspension setup, I guess. It is a bit drifty on the road. It's got quite a nice direct steering, but you get lots of pitch and roll in the suspension, which is fine. I get it, it's not an aerial atom. In an aerial atom, it'd be rock solid going around corners. This thing is, it does, it does multiple things, right? I could turn off and go down a bridleway into a field and spank this thing through a field, and it would eat that for breakfast. But equally on the road, it's amazing on the road, just the way it feels. The visibility you get is just next level. The connection with nature and the connection with the road is off the charts. It's wicked. Absolutely wicked. I mean, we go on a lot about cars and what they sound like and spicy exhaust and all that kind of thing. For me, I love a nice sounding exhaust, but one of the best automotive sounds you can get is a car with a supercharger. They just sound wicked. And the great thing about this supercharger is it's just behind me ears. And there's no sound deadening at all. <laughs> None! <laughs> And you accelerate down a line of cars like that, and you can see these moronic grins of people. Well, it's a combination of moronic grins of most people, and what a dick in others. But, you know, I'll take that. I reckon it's a 70-30, a you're cool to you're a dick ratio. I'll take that. Can't be perfect, can you? Ready for some pretty roads. <laughs> Resurface this bit and it's wicked. <laughs> Look at it. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm not quite got the heel toe action going on I, it's it's definitely set up to do it i'm just i think just because of the angle of my legs i think you need time in this car i know i've said it's super approachable and super friendly um but it's also a car that needs a huge amount of respect because there's no kind of major amounts of driver aids going on in here i mean that there's no traction control <laughs> that's just proper wheel spin straight away so you do have to be careful when you when you get on the throttle coming out of a corner, but that the car is communicating with me all the time. But it is one of those cars, seat time is everything in this car, I would think. The more you understand it, its quirks, its foibles, where the power comes in, what it's like at the edge, when it starts to go, how it communicates with you. All of those things, as you learn those things, I'm pretty sure this car would just keep on rewarding you as a driver. And, and what I love about cars like this is I love the mechanics of driving. And I love cars where it's up to you. There's no electronic systems. There's nothing getting in the way between the purity of you and the car and the gearbox and the clutch and the power delivery and the tire grip and the suspension setup and the steering feel. All of these things, it's this conversation you're constantly having with the car. And I love that about this car. It makes you want to be a better driver. It makes you think about what you're doing. Every gear change you want it to be better. Every input to the steering, it's just such a rewarding car. I can't think, apart from a Caterham, of a car that, that feels like that, that, that makes you want to just go for a drive for the sake of having a drive. Not, nothing, you know, not going from A to B. You just go out in this just to go out for a drive. That's cool. It's very cool in my book.
this car. Don't turn left, don't turn left, don't turn left, don't turn left. Yes! Here we go. <laughs> well, at that point, I'm going to draw this video to a close, I think. I could quite happily drive around in this car with a moronic grin on my face until the fuel runs out. This thing's awesome. I'm gonna leave you with that amazing view. What do you guys think of the aerial Nomad? I'd love to get one of these off-road. Oh my days, that would be epic. But as I said, this car is for sale. I will put the details in the description below. And knock yourself out, it's not as expensive as you think. And I just think for pure driving pleasure, I can't, I can't imagine many cars topping this. It's unbelievable, and I've driven lots of cars, but this, as a driver's car, this is number one. This is easily number one. Bloody awesome. Because you do that a lot. Anyway, guys, woo! I'm going to drive gently back to Anthony James' cars. If you enjoyed that, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, Please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. I know this video didn't have a huge amount of uh, automotive journalism in it. It just had lots of me going, ah! but that's kind of this car for you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Anyway, guys, I'll see you on the next film. You take care and drive safe.